Hey everyone, in this video, I will be analyzing Joa Felix's goal from the 1-0 defeat against Atletico Madrid in preseason. Now, if you are a regular The Scarlet Report viewer, now you know that I'm a glass half full kind of guy. I'm optimistic and positive about Manchester United, but I'm also a realist. I'm also pragmatic and I know that I still need to highlight some um, individual mistakes or just some areas of improvement, um, areas where Manchester United can improve as a team before we can be considered a genuine uh, strong team in the Premier League. So the reason why I chose uh, that Joao Felix goal is because it highlights some glaring individual mistakes. Atletico Madrid had no business scoring that goal and yet they were able to score it because we allowed them to do it. And so in this video I'm gonna show you exactly how we did that. So stay tuned. Okay, so the goal sequence, I chose to start the goal sequence about one minute before the goal actually happened uh, because I want to show you how we actually made it easy for Atletico Madrid to score this goal. So here I want you to focus on the following um, sequence. So it's just a normal build-up for Manchester United. Now I want you to focus on the following players. Uh, Diogo Dalot over here and then Fred and Donny van der Beek. So, okay. So again, same theme. Uh, as we've seen in the game against Liverpool, again, other players are telling the players where they need to be positioned during different sequences in the game. So here, obviously, Fred and Diogo Dalot are telling Donny van de Beek that he's not supposed to be in this area of the pitch, that he should not come deep, because this is how Eric Ten Hag has been building up his build-up play at Manchester United. Usually, Diogo Dalot tucks into this uh, central midfielder uh, area right here, with Fred coming in in between the centre-backs, and then the 8 and the 10, or the double 8, if you may, in this case, Christian Eriksen and Donny van de Beek, push higher up the pitch as well as Malasia on the left-hand side. And sometimes they switch it with Malasia or Shaw coming into central midfield and then Dalot uh, going uh, wide by the touchline. Uh, and so here clearly what this shows is that um, while most of the Manchester United players have structure to how we need to build up from the back due to Eric Ten Hag's instructions, certain players, in this case Tony van de Beek, are still unsure about what their actual role is during the build-up phase. So let's watch. Okay, so gives it back to Fred. Now look at Fred, of course. Again, same thing. Moving in to making himself available here for Harry Maguire. You know, say what you want about Fred, but he clearly has improved a lot in this area of his game. Now, if you look at Fred over here, he does have a lot of options, a lot of passing options. But as you can see, because of uh, Donny van de Beek's eagerness to get on the ball, Fred chose van de Beek. And as you can see here, van de Beek is, of course, free and a good option. So let's see what happens. So, of course, Fred passes the ball and Donny van de Beek loses it because Saul Niguez is much more um, aware of the situation. His anticipation is um, much better than Donny van de Beek. So here, we lost the ball to Atletico Madrid because of Donny van de Beek's lack of awareness and lack of focus. Atletico Madrid had no business having the ball here. So we just gifted the ball to them. Happens. So the ball finds its way to Alvaro Morata and again the player next to him is Lindelof. Now after the Van der Beek mistake, now this is the second mistake that's gonna happen. So what do we know about Alvaro Morata? He's a tall striker, plays with his back to the goal, is left-footed. So what Alvaro Morata is gonna want to do here is that he wants to pivot on his right shoulder so that he turns around, faces the goal and is comfortable on his left foot. Either to pass the ball to draw Felix or run at the defense and then shoot with his left foot. So what you can do as a centre-back now, admittedly this is a difficult position for a centre-back because the chances of you committing a foul uh, by over-committing in a tackle is pretty high. But as you can see, first of all Morata is too far from the box so even if uh, Lindelof gave away a free kick, that would not be such a big problem. But as a centre-back, what you have to do is be aggressive and literally push the striker away to actually force him to give the ball back wherever it came from so that you keep danger at bay and you allow your teammates to reposition themselves. But look instead at what Lindelof does. Oh, come on. Come on, Lindelof. What is that? Officially the nicest centre-back in the history of centre-backs. Now, do you know what really pisses me off about Lindelof in this uh, sequence here? It's not only the fact that he has failed here because of his lack of aggression, is because of this. Let me show you this clip of Lindelof in the first half of the same game. In the first half of the same game, he did this. Now clearly, as you can see, that Victor Lindelof on the 24th minute or 25th minute, that was a lion, a classy centre-back, 
great tackle that simply um, saved us. We were going to be 1-0 down at the 24th minute, but he saved us. And yet now, at the 85th minute... Who is this Victor Lindelof? This is an imposter. It's not the real Victor Lindelof. And that's the main problem that I have with many Manchester United fans is that they are definitely quality players, but they blow hot and cold sometimes in the same game. Quite erratic. So, Donny van de Beek, first mistake. Second mistake, Victor Lindelof. Now, the third mistake. The ball finds its way to Joao Felix, and now he is with Jogo Dalot. Now, Joao Felix, we all know him, he's right-footed, and out of the eight goals that he scored in La Liga last season, only one was with his left foot. Now, obviously, Dalot knows Joao Felix very well from the Portuguese setup. Also, Jogo Dalot played against Atletico Madrid, so theoretically, um, Ralph Ragnick's uh, tactical analyst should have uh, briefed uh, Jogo Dalot and the other Manchester United uh, defenders on every forward that Atletico Madrid has, including Joao Felix. So, so here Dalot, the smart thing for him to do is literally to pivot to his left in order to close that inside space for Joao Felix and force him outside on his left foot. Why? If Joao Felix goes outside, if he shoots with his left foot, first of all, there is a big chance the shot is not going to be on target. And even if it's on target, because if it's, it's, weaker, it's his weaker foot, then it's going to be of a lower quality, so you'd expect the goalkeeper to deal with it. But look at what Dalot does instead. There you go. He does the complete opposite. He overcommits. To, the, uh, to his right-hand side, hence signaling to draw Felix that he should cut inside on his right foot and shoot at goal. And of course, a, a player of the quality of Joa Felix is never going to miss. So um, the reason why I'm showing you this footage right here is simply to show that a lot of times when Manchester United concede goals, it's not necessarily because we are poor. It's just because we make so many individual mistakes that it, it kind of slowly builds up like a snowball and definitely um, eventually leads into us conceding a goal. It's like, think about it as American football or rugby, you know? You gain little pieces of territory as you go, and then when there is an opening, touchdown, right? So incremental gains. So we don't make life easy for ourselves, we make it difficult for ourselves because of these mistakes. Donny van de Beek in the build-up should not have given the ball so easily. We should have had much better build-up and kept the ball. Atletico Madrid should have been chasing the ball, not getting it within two passes, okay? Victor Lindelof should have shown aggression, okay? And then, of course, Jogo Dalot should not have been so naive with his positioning. If we make these mistakes against Brighton, take my word for it. Watch the game against Brighton on Sunday. If we end up dropping points against Brighton, it's going to be because of reasons like this. Either a set piece, Lewis Dunk is very good on set pieces, or because of individual mistakes like this. And that's what we need to stop. If we stop doing this, we are going to become a quality team. We are going to be regular top three finishers in the league with potentially, with a few signings, a shot at challenging for the league title. But not this way. Not if we can still make mistakes like this. And so this has to stop for us to become serious title challengers. So anyway, please uh, leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about this analysis. Uh, I will be coming back with another video after the Brighton game. Hopefully we get a good result against Brighton so we can have a positive glass half full kind of uh, video rather than a video like this. And until next time, cheers.